Shalom, shalom. This is El Dio for One Nation, One Power coming to you again to bring you the raw and uncut truth of the Holy Word of God. And uh, I just want to uh, let you know today, live right, stay right, fast right, walk right, and most of all, talk right. Come on out of here. Get your pen and get your paper and go with, go with me for a little ride. Come on out of here. You might want to put your seatbelt on today. Because this ride may get us just a little bit bumpy. Come on out of here. I'm going to bring you the word of God as it is written. We don't add one word and we don't take away one word. Come on out of here. And for some of you out there that's been following these hate mongers, not really understanding what you actually have got yourself involved in, let me tell you what you got yourself involved in. You see, I'm going to teach you something about a little bit of spiritual warfare right back. Satan doesn't bring you hate today. To, to kill you today. It's not his, his not it's not his design to bring you hate on Sunday and then kill you on Sunday. No, 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 my friend. He want to use the person that he has given hate to, the spirit of hate to, he want that man to spread it. <laughs> when he gives you the spirit of hate, is not designed to kill the actual man that he gave hate to. It's actually for him to carry out the plans of Hashitah and spread that hate so that he can negatively affect every person that hears him. Are you with me? That's right. That's why you get caught up in hate so easy because it's one of the attributes of Hashitah. Hate, come on out of here. I ain't talking about that just hate for a minute. I'm talking about that everlasting hate. I'm talking about that hate other people and never taking responsibility for yourself. Come on out of here. When do we ever take responsibility for our own actions? Come on out of here. Go with me to Deuteronomy 32 and 39. Deuteronomy 32 and 39. Now over in Exodus 3.15, you might want to write that down. This God of this Bible, King James Version, says that he is the God of the Hebrew. He never told you he was the God of the whole world. He said he is the God of the Hebrew nation. Deuteronomy 32 and 39. Let's see one of the attributes of this God of the Hebrews. Deuteronomy 32 and 39. See now that I, see now that I, even I, am he, and there is no God with me. There is no God with me. I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. Now I'm going to break down verse 39 for you. The Most High says, I am a higher. I am. Here go the same I am that's over there in Exodus chapter 3, verse 13 down to verse 18. This is the same God. He's letting you know I'm the same one that delivered the children of Israel out of Egypt. And I am God and there is no other God beside me. He said, there is no other God in the whole universe. Capital G-O-D, if you want to use that. Capital, in capital G-O-D, he said, there is no other God with me. In spite of what they might be telling you down there in America, there is no other God. There is no Allah. There is no Buddha. Now, come on out of here. This is what he's saying right here in Deuteronomy 32 and 39. He says, there is no other God. In spite of the lies of men down there in Babylon, there is no other God. You need to get that in your head right now. That there is no other God. Uh, Psalms 96 and 5. Let me know and let you know. Psalms 96 and 5. That all of the gods of the other nations are idols. There's only one God my brothers and sisters. If anybody tell you that there is another God. That is Hashatan. Pretending and playing like he's God. Come on out of here. He said I shall be like God. He's a pretender. He's a fake. He's a fraud. Come on out of here. You've been hoodwinked and you've been bamboozled. If you're following any other God than the God of the Hebrews, he is the only God. 
He lets you know that right here in Deuteronomy 32 and 39. Let me read it again. See now that I, even I, am he, and there is no God with me. I kill. One of the attributes of this God is he's a killer. No, my friend, he is not all love. He, This God doesn't drive around in a 1968 Volkswagen with love stickers on it. This God is a killer. And he's letting you know and letting me know in Deuteronomy 32 and 39, I'm a killer. Come on out of here. And this is why I love this God. Because he let me know one of his attributes. He's not going to wait for me to get to the judgment and then kill me after all of these years of me thinking that he was just love. See the danger in that? Now I know he's a killer. So because I know he's a killer, I'm going to watch my ways. <laughs> now I know he's a killer, I'm going to watch what I say. Come on out of here. Now I know he's a killer, I'm going to watch my thoughts. Come on out of here. Now I know he is a killer, I'm going to stay out the club on Friday night. Now I know he is a killer, I'm going to leave that other woman alone. Because he just might kill me. Come on out of here. That was Deuteronomy 32 and 39, brothers and sisters. Let's go to another controversial passage of scripture in your Bible. Same Bible, King James Version. Get your pen and get your paper. Don't believe nothing I say. Go with me to Revelations, chapter 6. The last book of your Bible, Revelations, chapter 6. Now, we already established that he's a killer. He kills, but he also makes alive. See, there's a benefit to serving this God too. He he demonstrated this in the life of Elijah the prophet when he was sent to the widow woman. Come on down in Zarephath where he brought back that woman's son that was dead. He brought him back alive. And he also used the same Elijah to kill captains of 50s that came up against him. Come on out of here. Are you following me? He was letting you know through Elijah that he kills and he makes alive. Are you with me? He also used Christ over in the New Testament when he brought Lazarus back from the dead. Come on out of here. But we're going to deal now in Revelation chapter 6, and we're going to begin in verse number 12. Revelation 6 and 12, what we're dealing with today is the reality of the God of the Hebrews in your Bible. Not the mythical made-up God that they teach you about. Not the mythical made-up God that... Uh, all of the preachers on your national syndicated television show are telling you about. That God does not exist. The God of Joel Osteen does not exist, but it is a figment of your imagination. The God of Creflo Dollar does not exist. It is a figment of your imagination created by the imaginations of men. Come on out of here. The God of T.D. Jakes does not exist. It is a mythical made of God created by through the imaginations and the mindsets of ordinary men, that's right, to lure you in and deceive you, come on out of here. The God of Joyce Myers does not exist. It is a mythical made up God to make you feel good and think that you're going somewhere that you're not going. It's all a deception, come on out of here. But the deception is right in front of your face. The God of Joel Osteen does not exist. The God of Benny Hinn does not exist. The God of uh, John Haggy does not exist. It is a mythical made of God, just like Santa Claus and, come on out of here, and the Tooth Fairy. What I'm reading you today is the God of the living word speaking to you and me. Revelation chapter 6 and verse 12. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal. There's another seal, the sixth seal. What's going to happen when you open that sixth seal? And lo, there was a great earthquake. One of the signs of the six seals being opened shall be a great earthquake. It's not going to be an earthquake uh, just situated within the borders of California. This earthquake will not be an earthquake just situated in the regions of Oklahoma, 5.1. He said a great earthquake, meaning this earthquake will be felt around the world. Come on out of here. This earthquake will set off every earthquake monitor on planet earth oh my god can you imagine that that when this earthquake when the sixth seal is open every earthquake monitor from the east the west and the north and the south shall simultaneously go off come on out of here 
Mm-mm-mm. Keep what's going, what's going to happen, Most High? He said there was a great earthquake when the sixth seal was open, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair. The sun going to become black as sackcloth of hair. That's a frightening sight. People are already intimidated by the so-called black man walking the streets. What you going to do when the sun go black? <laughs> What you gonna do when the sun decides it's gonna go black? Come on out of here. Let me tell you what you're gonna do. You're gonna lock your doors. <laughs> you're gonna hit your car alarms. <laughs> you're gonna grab your purses. Come on out of here. Most I got a sense of humor. The sun's gonna go black. And the moon gonna become as blood. Come on out of here. This is the moon you need to be worried about. You need to stop worrying about all of them old fake charts that John Haggy putting up. Talking about the blood moon this and the blood moon that. Y'all know we ain't worried about them moon. This moon right here, when this moon go blood red, let's see what's going to happen when this moon go blood red. Because there's going to be a great earthquake before this happens. Come on out of here. That's one of the signs you need to be paying attention to, my brothers and my sisters. A great earthquake felt worldwide. Every earthquake monitor going off simultaneously. Then the sun going to go black as a sackcloth of hair. Then the moon gonna turn into blood red. That's what I wanna know about this moon. Forget the other moons. Come on out of here. The devil is a liar. Third, verse 13. And the stars of heaven fell into the earth. What? The stars of heaven fell into the earth. Can you imagine that? Even as a fig casts her untimely figs, when she is shaken of a mighty wind, and the heaven departed. As a scroll, come on out of here. Now, brothers and sisters, when we read right here that the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, this is not talking about the stars that you see out there shining. Come on out of here. This is not talking about the stars that you see shining up there right now. Why? Those stars are bigger than the earth. These stars right here, come on out of here talking about the fallen angels that's right this is revelation 6 and 13 how is a star bigger than the earth gonna fall to the earth the earth will be obliterated there will be no more earth these rascals these dirty dogs these fallen angels that's residing up there in the first heaven they up there come on out of here because christ just told you they coward butts coming to the earth they up there right now acting like they back in their first estate, pretending like they something, which they are nothing. Come on out of here. Christ said they're going to fall to the earth. When Christ comes, these demons going to run like coward dogs. They're going to run to the earth. What part of the earth they going to run to? You think they're going to stay on top of the earth? Hell no. Nah. These punks going to run under the earth. They gonna, and, they, and, they, and the elite always calling people cowards and talking about cowards. Well, let me go ahead and break this down for you. If the fallen angel is going to run and be cast to the earth, is the fallen angel the one behind the underground military bases? They all think they're going to run and go under the earth, and they're going to use the remaining people on the earth as human shields. <laughs> I'm breaking this down for you. I'm giving you the understanding of what this is actually saying. These stars gonna fall to the earth. No, my friend, if the sun go out and the moon become as blood and a great earthquake happen, all of these angels already know the Bible, my friend. They know that Christ gonna be coming. So what they gonna do? They gonna turn tail and run. They gonna hide. They gonna run under the earth and use us as human shields. <laughs> Let's keep going. And the stars of heaven fell into the earth even as a fig tree casts her untimely fig, when she is shaken of a mighty wind, and the heaven departed as a scroll, when it is rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. We, we can't even take a regular earthquake, it's gonna be a great earthquake, the sun going black as sackcloth of hair, the moon gonna become blood, them stars gonna get their butts kicked to the earth, and then the Bible says that every mountain and island were moved out of their places. 
What is it going to be like on planet Earth when every island and mountain start moving? Sheer terror. Oh, come on out of here. Sheer terror. Do you hear me? I'm teaching you this word. In Revelation 6 and 14, every island and mountain is going to be moved out of its place. Sheer terror. Can you hear people screaming and hollering and dying? Back over in 30, Deuteronomy 32, 39, I kill. He, this is killing right here. This is killing right here. By who? Exodus 3:15. the God of the Hebrews. Once again, not that mythical made up God that they teach you on television today by Joyce Myers. This God is going to kill at this time in history. There will be bodies everywhere. Come on out of here. He says, when this begins to happen in verse 14, he's going to go into depth in verse 15 and let you know what these leaders that's running around on the earth right now, you know, fat mouthing, pretending like they tough. Oh, we got uh, a, a new missile called Satan. Oh, we got uh, a new missile, ER-51. Oh, we got drones. We got uh, Abrams tanks. We got weapons that no other country can uh, fight us with. We the number one. America, 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 cheering. USA, USA, USA. This is what the dumbed down sheep believe. But there's a power coming from the universe that's about to let you know that all that's a lie, all that's a myth, all that's make-believe, just like Mother Nature. Come on out of here. Let's see in verse 15 what the Most High say the people of the earth going to do when all of this start to take place. Let's see if they're going to be a, 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 a macho man Randy Savage appear. Let's see if there's going to be a whole Hogan that come out of somewhere that's going to save the American people. Let's see if there's going to be a Rambo that's going to come and, you know, save the world. Verse 15. And the kings of the earth and the great men and the rich men and the chief captains and the mighty men and every bondman and every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains. What? Revelation 6 and 15, the Most High just told me and just told you that every man on planet Earth that think he's something go run like the scalded dog cowards they are. He didn't say they're going to stand up like Samuel L. Jackson did to King Kong and looking dead in his eye. He said, these people are going to run. Let's see where they're going to run to. Verse 16. And said to the mountains and rocks, fall on us. What? These are supposed to be tough people. These are the people that's parading around on CNN, MSNBC, and all the other news channels pretending like they somebody, huh? acting like they tough. But the Most High just told me and told you in his living word in Revelation chapter 6, verse 14 and 15, that these people, your Donald Trumps, your Obamas, your Putins, your leaders of China, come on out of here, your leaders of Saudi Arabia, your leaders of Iran, your leaders of the great nations of the earth, the leaders of Pakistan, they all gonna run. So if they all gonna run, that means they already got a place prepared to run. Scalded dog cowards. Let's go. Verse 16. And said to the mountains and rocks, fall on us. They gonna be so afraid, they gonna be trying to commit suicide. They gonna say to the mountains and to the rocks, fall on us. Can you see the mountains and the rocks? who already gonna be fleeing and moving themselves, they gonna say, I ain't got time to fall on you. I'm trying to get the hell out the way too. <laughs> the mountain 
and the rocks going to talk back at this time, brothers and sisters. They're going to say, oh, the mountains and the rocks fall on us. The mountains and the rocks are going to be like, oh, no, your judgment is coming. <laughs> I can see the mountains and the rocks quoting scripture. This is the judgment that is meet for you. <laughs> it said to the mountains and rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. What? Why in verse 16 did it just say hide us from his face? I'm going to let this marinate on you just for just a minute. In Revelation chapter 6 and verse 16, the leaders, the kings of the earth, the great men, the rich men, the chief captain, and every mighty man, that's your soldiers in the military, you know what I'm saying? Bench pressing 400 pounds, shoot uh, three miles and uh, assassinate a man, you know what I'm saying? They bragging right now that they mighty men, they tough men, you know what I'm saying? There's no military as tough as us. We got the spit snaps. We got special forces, come on out of here. We got mighty army, military, million man army, two million man army. But the Most High said these mighty men gonna be running too. And then he said, they're gonna say hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne. Let me let that marinate on you for a minute. Why are they gonna say hide us from his face? Let me break that down for you. The reason they're gonna say in Revelation 6, and 16 hide us from the face of him that sitteth upon the throne is because his face is not going to look like the face that you've been sold his face is not going to look like the face that you've been told it look like do that make sense i'm breaking this down for you the most high's face is going to look just like daniel chapter 10 verse 5 and 6 the Most High's face is not going to be the face that the world want to see. It's not going to be that God naked with his finger with a long beard. Sorry, it's not going to be all of those fake images of the God that they told you was God. Why? They wouldn't be saying hide us from his face. They would be praising his face. They would be thanking his face coming. They will be cheering that his face is coming. But they, they say hide us from this man's face. Because this man's face don't look nothing like they've been told. Come on out of here. At this point, his face is going to look like a demon to him. Because they've been subdued by their mind with lies for so many years as to what Jesus looked like and as to what the Most High God looked like. They won't believe the Bible. They won't believe what people are telling them. They're gonna stay, they stand stuck in a make-believe mythical religion that is all make-believe. The Christ they follow in is make-believe. The God they paint is make-believe. Everything they do is make-believe. So when your make-believe world has to meet reality, you gonna have a heart attack. Come on out of here. That's Revelation chapter 6, verse 12 through 17, telling you everybody on the earth that call themselves somebody going to run underground and tell the rocks and the mountains to fall on them. So those underground bunkers, not going to help. Now let's go right fast. Uh, let's deal with some more uh, truth as it pertains to the Holy Word of God. You know all you people out there that like to uh, you've been taught and you've been brainwashed that uh, you should be uh, you should be uh, you know every day praying that Jesus will come back come on back Jesus save us Jesus Jesus coming any day now the rapture gonna happen any day now you know Jesus coming the rapture can happen brother tomorrow the rapture can happen Jesus coming you still eating pig feet you still eating shrimp you still eating crab? You, you got lobster on your breath. The cockroach of the ocean. And you at the same time, you saying the rapture can happen any moment. Go to Amos chapter 5 right fast. Let's go to Amos. Remember, we're dealing with the God of the Hebrews.
This God is diametrically opposed to everything being taught in planet Earth right now today in Christianity. Everything in this book is opposite of what they believe because Satan has used ministers of light, sons of Satan, to portray themselves as ministers of light to spread a delusion because the Most High said because you love not the truth that he would send a strong delusion on the earth. That strong delusion is modern day Christianity. So when you're hearing me read out of the very Bible that you carry, you don't believe it. And I'm giving you scripture and verse and telling you to go with me and you're seeing it with your own eyes, but you don't believe it. Why? You read those series of Lost Left Behind. You didn't understand that there was witchcraft tied to the Left Behind series. So when you read it, you got seduced by spirit to believe a mythical lie. Go with me to Amos chapter 5. Amos chapter 5. Don't believe nothing I said. We've already established that the God of the Hebrews is a killer. He makes a lie. He wounds and he heals. We already established that when he returns, everybody on the earth going to be running and screaming and hollering and saying, hide us from the face of him that sitteth upon the throne. That's the most high God and the Lamb. In that same verse, and the Lamb, and the Lamb. Hide us from both of their faces, and the Lamb. Add the Lamb in there. Hide us from the face of him that sitteth upon the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb. Why are you going to be running me? Because all your lies that you have been perpetrated on the earth, in, from, in America since, uh, what, 1942, all of these lies going to come to an end. Now go with me to Amos chapter 5, and let's put another lie to it, to the end. Let's put another lie to death to death. Imagine that we got coffins lined up, and we taking the lie, and we killing them one at a time, and we putting them in a coffin. We already bury one. He's not a God of all love over in Deuteronomy 32 and 39. He says, I kill and I make a lie. He says, I'm the only God and there is none beside me. He said, can there, can there be anything that can deliver out of my hand? Can Joseph Smith deliver you out of the hand of the Most High God? Can your priest deliver you out of the hand of the Most High God? And can anything on this earth that you can think of deliver you out of the hand of the Most High God when he makes up his mind, he coming for you? He's saying there is no object. He's saying there is no weapon. He's saying there is no nothing on the earth that can stop me when I come for you. That's frightening, my friends. Amos chapter 5, beginning at verse 18. Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. What? Woe, absolute, abject misery and destruction for everybody out there that's desiring the day of the Lord. Stop. Let's meditate on that. This is Amos chapter 5, verse 18. Now, we got family and we got friends caught up in make-believe religions worldwide. And you got people waiting on the mock D. They're going to bring in the mock D, the 12th Imam. And you got Christians waiting on the Antichrist, thinking he's going to be Christ. You don't understand what he's going to look like. This deception got to be the deception of all times. He gonna look like that false image you been you got on your wall. You gonna that's right. Cause the other Christ in Revelation chapter six told you and me that they gonna everybody gonna be running and hiding when he come back. There's gonna be a great earthquake before he come back. Every island and mountain gonna move out of this place before he come back. But when the, see the, the devil don't have that power. So when the devil come back. Uh, the Antichrist, Christ says, when they say I'm in the desert, don't believe, don't go. If they say I'm in the secret chamber, chambers, believe it not. When this dude come back, it's going to be peace. <laughs> when Christ come back, it's going to be hell on earth. See the difference? There is a difference between the God of the Bible and reality and the mythical made up God of modern day Christianity. Amos chapter 5 verse 18 
absolute destruction to all of you out there that desire the day of the Lord. You waiting on the day of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Jesus coming back any day now. Oh, oh, yeah, I hear him out there talk. The rapture can happen any day now. But you notice something? I pay attention. When Obama was president, the rapture could happen any day, any moment. <laughs> now that Trump is president, I don't hear nobody calling for the rapture. <laughs> Everything is silent. Why? They're going to make America great again. <laughs> See, brothers and sisters, this is absolute madness. When you open your eyes and pay attention, nobody's hollering about the rapture now. The church is not hollering about the rapture now. They're going to make America great again. <laughs> the hell with the second coming of Christ now. We're going back to slavery. We're going back to utopia. We're going back and we can kill them. Mm. See what you following? The Most High says, Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. To what end is it for you? Question mark. He asks you a question. He says, when the earthquake happened, when the islands flee out of their place, when the rich men, the kings of the earth, the bond men, the mighty men, run and hide, what end is it going to be for you? What is going to happen to you if Christ, if Yeshua come back tomorrow? He said, what's going to be your end? He said, think about it. He said, are you ready today? If he decide to come back tonight, are you ready right now? If he decide to come back while this video being made, that's what he asking you. Are you ready? Is your wife ready? Is your children ready? Are you living in fornication? Are you living in adultery? Are you are you still doing things that you're not supposed to be doing? That's the question in Amos 5 and 18. To what end will it be for you? I'm breaking it down for you. Are you going to make it? Are you going to survive? Are you ready? Why are you desiring for Christ to return when your life is not right yet? When your auntie's life is not right yet. Why are you desiring for me to return? Because when I return, there will be no second chances. When he returns, there will be no second chances. He says, uh, to what end is it for you? The day of the Lord is darkness and not light. Darkness and not light. Remember we just read over in the book of Revelation chapter 6, where it described the second coming of Christ that the sun going to become black as sackcloth of hair. So that means it's going to be dark, right? Everything going out is going to be dark and not light. Are you afraid of the dark now? We haven't even experienced utter darkness yet. Wait till the moon and the sun go out. Wait till the moon and the sun go out. You will experience utter darkness. Are you ready for that? If not, get ready. He says, to what end is it for you? The day of the Lord is darkness and not light. Verse 19. As if a man did flee from a lion. As if a man did free from, flee from a lion. I want you to get that image in your head and see a man running from a lion. Can a man outrun a lion? Answer is no. But he'll sure give it a hell of a try, huh? <laughs> How long do you think he can sprint before that lion grabs you? <laughs> we can get Hussein Bolt. <laughs> do you think Hussein Bolt can outrun a lion? Come on out of here. He, when the guns go off, pay ya! He might get out of the blocks first, but I can t I can guarantee you, four legs is stronger and faster than two legs. He'll catch it. That's what Christ said. As if a man did free from a lion and a bear met him. What? 
Can you imagine trying to get away from a lion, which is a man eater? <laughs> you trying to avoid being eaten. You running, and then there's a corner, and you try to make a quick right. And you make that quick right. As soon as you make that quick right and take two steps, there's a bear. <laughs> 12 foot tall. Alaskan grizzly. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you running from the line. And then you make a quick right turn around the corner. And there is a 12 foot tall, 1500 pound Alaskan brown grizzly. You still gonna die. That's what Christ saying. Or went into a house and leaned his hand on the wall and a serpent bit him. Christ said in verse 19, the day of the Lord you will not escape. I will not escape. None of us will escape the day of the Most High. Let's look at uh, verse 20. Amos 5, 20. Amos 5 and 20. Shall not the day of the Lord be darkness and not light, even very dark, even very dark, black as sackcloth of hair, very dark, and no brightness in it, and no brightness in it. Why? The only light that the whole planet is going to see is going to see Christ when he comes. Praise the most high. The only light that will be alive in the universe at that time will be the light coming from Christ. Oh, praise the Most High. This Bible is alive. When you read it, as it is written, you get to understand it. Now, Christ said, why are you desiring the day of the Lord? What's going to happen when he comes? Let's go to Isaiah chapter 13. Isaiah chapter 13. Don't believe nothing I said. Isaiah 13 and verse 9. Isaiah, Isaiah 13 and verse 9. Go with me on a quick ride. Isaiah chapter 13 and verse 9. Remember we just read over uh, Deuteronomy 32 and 39. He says, I kill and I make a lie. Well, it's a time and a season for everything under the sun. The day of the Lord is going to be a day of killing. Now, we just read over, over there in... Uh, Revelation chapter 6, verses 12 through 17, that these people are going to be running for their life. It's going to be a great earthquake. The sun going to become dark. We just read in Amos 5, even very dark. Uh, the moon going to become blood. The island is going to flee and run. Every mountain going to be moved out of this place. Every rich man, bond man, free man, mighty man going to run and hide themselves in the caves of the rocks. And then the cliffs are going to say, fall on us. And hide us from the face of him that sitteth upon the throne. Now let's go to Isaiah 13 and 9. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh. What is going to be like when he cometh, Isaiah? Crew. What? Crew. Meaning the most high is going to be killing men, women, and children. Both with wrath and fierce anger. To lay the land desolate. And he shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it. That's Deuteronomy 32 and 39, I kill. Right here in Isaiah 13 and 9, he letting you know he's going to carry out his duty as a killer in Isaiah 13 and 9 because he's going to kill every sinner out of the land and make the land desolate. We know a sinner, 1 John 3 and 4, is those that transgress against the laws of God. Think about that. There's going to be a lot of people dead, ain't it? I teach reality. Why? It is reality that causes you to repent and want to live right. When you are taught the Bible like this, your life changes. You begin to make life-changing decisions about what are you doing on today. What are you going to do on tomorrow? I'm going to slap that premeditated sin spirit right the hell out of your life. Come on out of here. Teaching like this will not premeditated sinning out of your life. When I teach like this, 
you will no longer be entertaining what you're going to do with sin next and how you're going to sin in the next hour. No, you will be relegated to getting your life cleaned up and analyzing and judging yourself so that you will not be judged at the judgment day. Come on out of here. When you teach like this, come on out of here. Now, let's stay in the book of Isaiah and let's get some more reality. We just took another lie by the throat, killed it, and threw it in a casket. Let's take another lie. Let's get another one. Isaiah 66. Come on out of here. And 16. Oh, praise the Lord. Jesus is coming. Yeah, he is. He coming. Every island is going to move out of this place. And every mountain, there shall be a great earthquake. The sun shall become black as Seth cloth his hair. And the moon at that time will become as blood. And it will be very dark. And men will be running from as if they're running from a lion. And a bear will meet them. And then they will put their hand on a wall. And a serpent will bite them. Break down. You will not escape the day of the Lord. And neither will I. Isaiah 66 and 16. Oh, we'll start at verse 15. Come on out of here. Isaiah 66, 15 and 16. For behold, the Lord will come with fire. What he coming with? Fire. What he coming with? Fire. So, now I understand Revelation chapter 6 with every mighty man, every free man, every bond man, every man on the earth going to run and hide in the cliffs of the, in the rocks. Now I know why they're going to hide in the rocks. Because they know that when the sun become black and sackcloth as hair, when a great earthquake happened, when the moon turned into real blood at this time, come on out of here. When every island and mountain run and flee out of their place, everything going to go completely dark. They're going to be hiding underground in the, in the bunkers. Now I know why they're going to be hiding in the bunkers. Because they know fire coming with it. These people are going to be trying to avoid the flame. But at the same time, they got fake Christianity teaching you to pray for the day of the Lord. When the day of the Lord, they're going to be running. They're going to be screaming. They're going to be hollering. But they got the Christians believing that uh, they're going to lift up their hands and receive Christ. And everything going to be peaceful. No, my friend. They setting you up to be human shields. <laughs> the elite are setting you up to become human shields. While they hide under the earth, you will be on top of the earth and you will be human shields. But Christ just made a promise over in Isaiah 13 and 9 that he's going to destroy the sinners out of the land. See, they're going to use you as human shields while they under the ground hiding. And you're going to be up on the earth. And when the whole thing go black, the earthquake, the islands fleeing out of their place, you think you're going to be standing up? That's why the Bible says every knee shall what? Bow. And every tongue shall what? Confess. You're not nothing going to be standing up when Christ returns. Come on out of here. For behold, the Lord will come with fire. And with his chariots like a whirlwind. This is going to be a UFO invasion like you ain't never seen in your life. To render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. This fire is not ordinary fire. This fire will make nuclear fire look like it's ice cold. This fire will burn everything according to the book of Malachi that the wicked shall become ashes under the soles of your feet. I wonder how much heat it takes to hit a human being so fast, so hard, that immediately you go to ashes. Somebody look that up. Verse 16, for by fire and by his sword will he plead with all flesh. 
and the slain of the Lord shall be many. Now, the word plead there, if you look it up in Hebrew, means to pronounce judgment, to execute judgment, to pronounce a sentence. What did he say in Isaiah 13 and 9? That all of the sinners shall be destroyed out of it, meaning the land. That's a pronounced judgment. Ezekiel 18 and 4, Behold, all souls are mine, from the soul of the Father to the soul of the Son is mine. The soul that sinned shall surely die. Deuteronomy 32 and 39, I kill and I make alive, I wound and I heal. I do all these things. At this time, he will be a killer. Are you with me out there? This is the understanding of the Bible. Now you might be saying, brother, that's the that's the Old Testament. Well, let's go to 2 Peter. Let's go to 2 Peter 3.10. Let's see if the prophet Peter had anything to say to back up what was said in the Old Testament. 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 10. 2 Peter 3.10. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Why are the elements going to make melt with fervent heat? Why are the elements going to melt with fervent heat? Because this is the fire that Christ is coming with. It's going to melt the very elements with a fervent heat. A heat that is never that this earth has never been introduced to. But it will be introduced when Christ comes. This heat is heat that we have never experienced. And you talking about it's hot now in Chicago? You talking about LA is hot? 90 degrees? Oh, it's hot. Oh, it's hot. Oh, it's hot. And 78 degrees? Oh, it's hot. Oh, it's 80 degrees is hot. No, my friend. Hot is coming. <laughs> oh, come on out of here. He said it's going to melt with a fervent heat. And the earth also. And the works that are therein shall be burned up. Who is this Christ they teaching in the Christian church? The Bible don't acknowledge what they teach. What they teaching is diamet diametrically opposed to what the Bible is saying, folks. It's, it's, but you know what? A lot of people, a lot of people got to fulfill this prophecy. A lot of people going to die because they got to fulfill this prophecy. Christ said over in Isaiah 13 and 9, he's going to destroy the sinners out of the land. There are a lot of people living today who don't know it yet, but that scripture got their name on it. <laughs> I'm breaking this down as best I can for you. In verse 11, Peter said in verse 10 what's going to happen when Christ return, and then in verse 11, he's going to ask us a question. Sing then, that all these things shall be dissolved. What manner of persons are you to be in all holy conversation and godliness? Peter asked the question in verse 11. This is the same question. You can precept this with Amos 5, starting in verse 18 to 20. When he asks you, what end shall it be for you, the day of the Lord? What end shall it be for you? Peter turns around and asks you in verse 11, since you know all this is coming on the earth, how should you be acting? Should you be out there cussing people out? Should you be out there cussing out the daughters of Zion? Should you be preaching stuff? That's, should you be preaching against Acts 9.15? Should you be teaching that the Gentiles don't have a place? Should you be teaching that there's a reincarnation? See, these brothers don't have a clue of the God that they supposedly be our following. They don't know that this God is a killer. He don't care if you're a preacher. He going to kill you. He don't care if you're a deacon. He going to kill you. If you don't teach this Bible as it is written, you're going to be put to death. I'm going to say that again. If you deviate from this book in the least, you are going to be put to death. All these brothers running around calling themselves high priest, but over in the book of Hebrews, it tells you that Christ came after the order of Machazel deck and that Christ is our high priest. 
We are no longer under the order of F. Oh, we are no longer under the order of Aaron. So all of God's wrath and judgment is going to be poured out in one moment. Oh, come on out of here. When he, that's why the day of the Lord is going to be darkness, even very dark, as the black of sackcloth of the head. His wrath is going to be poured out at the second coming. Unlike when he was in the, under the order of Aaron, we killed you. You were put to death with stoning for breaking the Sabbath right then and there. Now, if you willingly still breaking the Sabbath, he gonna just let you do it for 30 years. He gonna let you do it for 15 years. He'll let you do it and all the way until the second coming of Christ. And then he'll whack you. He in heaven, the Most High, has fired many Israelites. Oh boy, in the heavenly realm, the Most High has fired many Israelites teaching false doctrines. But on the earth, they still on YouTube thinking that God is with them, thinking that God is on their side. But God has already fired them and he's reserved them for the day of judgment and fiery indignation. You better come on up out of here. They don't know this God. This God will fire you and then let you keep working. And you don't even know you've been fired until the day of fire appears from the Lord. You better come on out of here. I don't play with this God. I'm going to teach this word just like it is written. I don't want your money. I don't need your friendship. I'm going to preach what thus says the Lord. Close the book. Go into my bedroom and get a good night sleep. The kind of sleep where you're slobbing on your pillow. Come on out of here. Why? I told you what he wanted you to hear. The day of the Lord is not going to be what you think. Now go to be the second Chronicles. Second Chronicles. <coughs> I was in prayer the other day and I heard this in my head. The Bible says the things that you hear in the dark, preach it on the rooftops. Come on out of here. Preach it from the rooftops. The things that you hear in the dark, preach it from the rooftops. Let's go to second Chronicles. Second Chronicles. Second Chronicles. Second Chronicles. Come on out of here. Let's go to Second Chronicles 16. Second Chronicles 16. Second Chronicles 16. And now, now we already know that the eyes of the Lord are forever on the right. I'm going to read it like it said. That the eyes of the Lord are forever on the righteous. Now I'm giving you a prophetic word that was given to me in this ministry uh, Friday night. Come on out of here. Isaiah 16 and 9. Not Isaiah. 2 Chronicles 16 and 9. Forgive me. 2 Chronicles chapter 16 and verse 9. 2 Chronicles 16 and 9. You ready? For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth. Where do his eyes run? To and fro throughout the whole earth. From one end of the earth to the other end of the earth. To show himself strong in the behalf of them whose heart is perfect towards him. Stop. He gave me this word that his eyes right now are running to and fro through the earth looking into the hearts of men and women to see whose heart is perfect towards him we know that that's uh is that psalms is that is that psalms psalms 19 7 the law of the lord is perfect converting the soul psalms 19 7 the law of the lord is perfect converting the soul in second chronicles 16 and 9 the Most High spoke to us through his word and said that his eyes are running to and fro 
through the earth right now looking into the hearts of men and women to see whose heart is perfect towards him so that he can in turn make you stronger today than you were yesterday. Oh, you better come on out of here. The Most High is looking into the earth right now into the hearts of men and women to see whose heart is perfect towards him keeping his laws, statutes, and commandments letting no gown fly from their mouth and keeping our holy conversation keeping themselves sanctified and separated from the world so he can make them stronger today than they were yesterday that's right my friend the most high want to make you stronger today than you were last week he wants you to be able to look back at what you thought was going to take you out but in reality it made you stronger come on out of here he wants you to look back this Passover and see what he has done for you and your family. He wants you to see the old you and see the new you. He wants you to look back and see that the thing that you thought was going to destroy you in 2016 that came back against you in 2017 was like water falling off of a duck's back because the most high's eyes are running to and fro through the earth, looking into the hearts of men and women to see whose heart is perfect towards him so that he can strengthen you to make you stronger today than you were yesterday. Come on out of here. That is a prophetic word that the Most High gave this ministry, and I'm releasing it to you. The Most High want to make you stronger today than you were yesterday. He wants the thing that you thought was going to take you out Satan thought he was going to wipe you out, take you out. The Most High used it to strengthen you. The Most High used it to make you who you are today. That's right. No weapon that the devil has formed against you shall prosper because the eyes of the Lord are running to and fro through the earth, looking into the hearts of those that have sold out for him so that he can make them stronger in this walk than they ever thought they would ever be. Come on out of here. May the Most High's prophetic word meet you right where you are today, my brother or my sister. He said that his eyes are on you. He watched you. He seen you put down the crab. He seen you put down the lobster. He seen you put down the pig. He seen you put down Easter. He seen you put down Christmas. He seen you walk away from the world. He's seen you walk away from mama. He's seen you walk away from daddy. He's seen you walk away from auntie. He's seen you walk away from big mama. He says he's going to reward you according as your work shall be for being obedient and faithful unto him just like our father Abraham. Oh, come on out of here. I'm here today to let you know, brothers and sisters, get ready to be made stronger at this Passover than you were at the last Passover. Can you remember where you was at a year ago? Can you remember where you were at two years ago, three years ago, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, and examine yourself and look and see where you are today? The Most High, my friend, is on our side. He is going to mold us and shape us just like the potter will come on out of here he's working on us right now he's shaping us right now come on out of here so that we can be like him at his appearing oh may the most high add a blessing to all of you that took the time out to listen to the word of the living god as it is written as it is written shalom Wow.